U.S. Physics Olympiad Year 2023 U.S.A. P.H.O. Final Round This examination had two parts, as usual. Part A and Part B. Each part had uh, three questions and uh, lasts for 90 minutes. Problem A1 Circus Act in this problem we consider a small ball bouncing back and forth between two points. In all parts below the acceleration of the gravity is G. Collisions are perfectly elastic, air resistance is negligible and the impact points are at the same height. The diagrams are not drawn to scale. Question A. Consider a ball bouncing between two inclined planes, which each make an angle theta less than 90 degrees to the horizontal. The ball has speed V0 at the impact points, which are separated by a distance D. Question 1. The ball can bounce back and forth along the same path, as shown. For what values of theta is this uh, position possible? For these values, uh, what is uh, V0? Question 2. The ball can also take one trajectory while traveling to the right and a separate trajectory when traveling back. Let phi not equal 0 be the angle between the paths at the impact points. For what value of theta and phi is this uh, motion possible? For these values, uh, what is uh, V0? Question B. Now, suppose the ball bounces within a semispherical well of radius of curvature R. As in part A2, alternates between two distant points which are uh, flight times t1 and t2 not equal t1. Find all the possible values of r in terms of t1 and t2. Question C. Finally, suppose the well has a sinusoidal shape described by y as function of x equal negative l multiplied by sine 2x over l. The ball takes a two distinct paths with the flight times t1 and t2 not equal t1, and the horizontal distance between the impact points is less than pi l. Find all of the possible values of l in terms of t1 and t2. U.S. Physics Olympiad, year 2023, USA, PHO. Final round. Problem A2. Time is a flat circle. A particle of mass m and the negative charge negative q is uh, constrained to move in a horizontal plane. In the situations uh, described below, this particle can either oscillate back and forth in a straight line or move in a circle. These two modes of motion are interesting because they generate linearly and uh, circularly polarized radiation, respectively. But in this problem you may ignore any energy lost to radiation. Part A. A large uh, positive charge, big Q, much greater than a small Q, is fixed in place a uh, distance R directly below the origin of the plane. Question 1. When the particle is a distance small r much less than big r from the origin, find an approximate expression for its potential energy due to the charge big Q to second order in small r over big r up to an arbitrary constant. You may use this result for the rest of the problem. Question 2. If the particle oscillates linearly with the amplitude A much less than big R, what is its uh, angular frequency omega L? Question 3. If the particle performs circular motion with radius 
small r much less than big r what is its uh, angular frequency omega l part b now an additional negative charge negative q is fixed in a place at the origin of the plane question one what is the equilibrium distance r0 of the particle from the origin question two if the particle oscillate linearly with the amplitude a much less than r0, what is its uh, angular frequency big omega l? Is it higher or lower than small omega l? Question 3. Now suppose the particle performs circular motion with radius r equal r0 plus delta r, where delta r much less than r0. What is its uh, angular frequency big omega L in terms of omega C, R and delta R? Is it higher or lower than omega C? U.S. Physics Olympiad year 2023 USA EHO Final Round Problem A3 The motive power of ice in the Carnot cycle, a gas is heated at a constant temperature Th and cooled at constant temperature Tc. Furthermore, no other heat transfers occur and uh, all other steps of the cycle are reversible. The laws of uh, thermodynamics state that any such cycle must have efficiency nu equal W over Q in where W is work done by gas and the Q in is heat input inside the cycle, which is equal to 1 minus Tc over Th. Below we will explore two other heat engines which uh, recover this efficiency in certain limits. Part A. Consider the following heat engine involving one mole of idle monatomic gas. The gas begins at temperature T0, pressure T0 and volume V0 and undergoes four reversible steps. First step. The gas is expanded at a constant pressure until its uh, temperature rises to 1 plus beta multiplied by T0. Second step. The gas is expanded at constant temperature until its pressure falls to P0 over alpha. Step 3. The gas is contracted at a constant pressure until its temperature falls back to T0. Step number 4. The gas is contracted at constant temperature until its pressure rises back to P0. First question. Which steps require heat to be transferred to the gas? For each such step, give uh, the total heat input in terms of P0, V0, alpha and beta. Second question. Under what conditions on alpha and beta would we expect the efficiency of this heat engine to approach that of a Carnot cycle? working between the same maximum and minimum temperatures. Third question. Find the efficiency of this uh, heat engine for general alpha and beta. Part B. Now consider a heat engine built around the freezing and melting of water, which occurs at a pressure-dependent temperature Tc from P. Initially, a volume of V of water is uh, squeezed underneath a piston so that it uh, experiences the total pressure P1. And the water is on the edge of a freezing with the temperature Tc from P1. The engine then undergoes four reversible steps. First step. A mass is slowly placed on the piston raising the total pressure to P2. Second step. The water is uh, cooled to temperature Tc from P2 
and uh, frozen. Step 3. The mass is slowly removed from the piston, lowering the pressure back to P1. Step 4. The ice is heated back to temperature Tc from P1 and uh, melted. Assume that water and ice are incompressible with the fixed densities rho W and rho C. First question. What is the net work done by this engine in terms of P1, P2, V and the densities? Second question. Assume the latent heat per unit mass L to melt ice is large so that the freezing and melting account for essentially all of the heat transfer in the cycle. What is the efficiency of the engine in terms of P1, P2, L and the densities? Third question. Since we assumed all heat transfer occurs during melting or freezing, this cycle has the same efficiency as the Carnot cycle in the limit where P1 and P2 are very close. Use this fact to enter an expression for delta Tc over delta P in terms of Tc, L and the densities. U.S. Physics Olympiad year 2023 USA PHO Final Round Problem B1 Electric Roulette Consider a cylindrical solenoid with radius small r, length L much greater than small r, and n turns per unit length. It is made of uh, one continuous wire, with the top connecting back to the bottom as shown at left. In the middle of the solenoid, part of the wire is replaced with the assembly shown at right. A uniform conducting rod of mass M and radius R is uh, connected to the bottom half of the solenoid and is uh, free to rotate about the solenoid's axis of symmetry. The end of the rod slides on a fixed conducting ring which is attached to the top half of the solenoid. This assembly and the solenoid form one continuous conductor carrying total current I. First part. What is the inductance of this system? Assume that the NR much greater than 1, so that the magnetic field produced by the current in the rod and the ring is negligible. Part B. When the rod is uh, within a uniform vertical magnetic field B, find the torque it experiences in terms of I, B and R. Part C. If the rod rotates with the angular velocity omega, the electrons inside have a tangential velocity. Find the electromotive force across the rod in terms of omega, B and R. Now we will consider the dynamics of this system in some simple situations. For all the parts below, neglect energy losses due to friction, resistance and radiation. Part D. First, suppose the system initially carries no current and the entire system is inside a uniform external magnetic field B0 parallel to the axis of the solenoid. If the rod is given a small initial angular velocity, its angular velocity will oscillate in time. Find the period of uh, these oscillations. Part E. Next, suppose there is uh, no external magnetic field B0 equals 0 and at time T equals 0, the system carries current I0 and the rod has zero angular velocity. First question. The rod's angular velocity omega as function of time 
approaches a value omega zero after a long time. What is omega zero? Second question. Find omega t over omega zero in terms of omega zero t n and l. You may use the integrals on the reference sheet. U.S. Physics Olympiad, year 2023, USA PHO, final round. Problem B2. Fast and Furious. A space program uh, wants to accelerate a spaceship to final mass m equal 100 kilograms to relativistic speeds to observe distant stars. They have two proposals to evaluate. Part A. Their first proposal is to use traditional rocket propulsion. A rocket of uh, initial mass m0 and the final mass m that expels propellant with exhaust speed u relative to the rocket will reach a speed v equal u multiplied by logarithm m0 over m. Suppose the desired final speed is Vf equal 3c over 5. In the subparts below, neglect relativistic effects and give your answers in the form 10 power n, where n has at least two significant figures. Question 1. If the rocket has exhaust speed u equal 3.5 km per second, what must its uh, starting mass be in kilograms? Question 2. If the propellant is exhausted at rate 7.0 kg per second, how long does the acceleration take in centuries? Question 3. If the energy density of the fuel is 2.0 multiplied by 10 power 7 joules per kilogram, how much total energy is required in joules? For the rest of this problem, you should account for special relativity. Part B. Another option is uh, to use a spaceship with a constant mass M propelled by light produced by lasers on uh, Earth with a total power P equal 6 multiplied by 10 power 12 Watt. The light evenly impacts a sail on the spaceship and uh, reflects of the sail directly back towards the Earth. Neglecting the orbital motion of the Earth and uh, give all your answers in the frame of the Earth. Question 1. What is the force on the spaceship when the spaceship has speed v? Question 2. How long will it take to accelerate the spaceship to speed vf equal 3c over 5 in seconds? You may use the integrals on the reference sheet. Question 3. At the moment the spaceship reaches this speed, how much total energy has been used to power the lasers in joules? The following results from relativity may be helpful. First, the Lorentz factor is defined as a gamma equal 1 over square root from 1 minus v square over c square. Second, an object of mass m and the velocity v has momentum p equal gamma mv and energy E equal gamma mc square. The force is defined by F equal delta P over delta T. Third, the momentum and energy of light are related by E equal PC. Fourth, in the frame S prime with the velocity V multiplied by or X relative to a frame S the energy and momentum are E prime equal gamma multiplied by E minus V P X and the P X prime equal gamma 
multiplied by px minus ve over c square. U.S. Physics Olympiad, year 2023, USA PHO, final round. Problem B3. Starry Messengers. In 1987, light from supernova SN1987A was detected by telescopes on Earth. The supernova occurred in the large Magellanic cloud, a distance d equal 1.5 by 10 power 21 meters away, making it the closest in centuries. Observations of this event tell us a remarkable amount about elementary particles. Part A. Both light and the neutrinos were produced in the core of the supernova. Neutrinos are elementary particles which interact extremely weakly with the ordinary matter. Detectors on Earth saw a few dozen of uh, these uh, neutrinos in a burst which uh, occurs about t equal 3 hours before the light arrived. Question 1. One explanation of these observations is that the neutrino's speed V was faster than the speed of light C, violating special relativity. If this is the case, find V minus C in meters per second. Question 2. Another explanation is that the light was slower down by the gas in the solar system while the neutrinos always moved at speed c. Suppose the solar system has a uniform index of refraction n within a radius d equal 10 power 13 meters. What would n have to be to explain the time delay? Neither of these explanations seems plausible. Modern Accepted explanation is that the light was trapped for some time inside the supernova while the neutrinos were able to leave immediately. Therefore, for the rest of this problem, you should assume special relativity holds. The results listed on the previous page may be helpful. The neutrinos did not all arrive at once. The first arrived with an energy of about E1 equal 40 mega electron volt, and the last arrived about T equal 10 seconds later with an energy of about E2 equal 20 mega electron volt. Part B. One explanation of these uh, observations is that neutrinos have a small mass m so that when they have energy E much greater than mc square, their speed V is slightly slower than the speed of light. Question 1. Find an approximate expression for C minus V to leading non-trivial order in mc square over E. Question 2. Using the information above, numerically estimate the neutrino mass m in units of electron volt per c square. Part C. Another explanation is that the neutrinos did not travel in straight lines, but rather were deflected by the intergalactic magnetic field. Suppose this uh, field is uniform b equal 10 power negative 13 tesla and uh, directed perpendicular to the line joining earth and the supernova and that uh, neutrinos have charge q equal epsilon e question one if the neutrino has momentum p then in the presence of the magnetic field it travels in a circle of radius r equal p over qb which is much greater than D. 
and uh, its path to the Earth has a total length L. Find an approximate expression for L minus D to leading non-trivial order in D over R. Question 2. Using the information above, and assuming the neutrino mass is very small, so that the effect in part B is negligible, numerically estimate epsilon. 